Hi, I'm Pastor Cheryl. I want to wish you a very, very happy new year. But before we get started on today's message, please join me for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the message that you've given me. Thank you for your many, many blessings. Lord, I pray that uh, this message would give hope and encouragement to your people, that they will begin 2021 with a new spiritual outlook. We praise you and celebrate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, 2020 was quite the year for our country. I mean, start with the global pandemic, add economic upheaval, stir in a contested national presidential election, and sprinkle in some unprecedented celestial events. You have a recipe for a most unusual year. We saw quarantines, lockdowns, toilet paper shortages, and who knew that face masks could become fashion statements? Life took us on a different life took on a different flavor for most of us. And we sought comfort in favorite foods and many of us battled the dreaded COVID-19 pounds of extra weight as gyms closed and our favorite restaurants switched to takeout orders or closed their doors completely. Many of us began working from home, schooling from home, and sheltering at home. Churches shut their doors and navigated around governmental restrictions for gatherings. Some of us battled the virus and lived, while some of us battled the virus and died. Funerals look different this year, with severe limits on the number of mourners allowed. Hospitalizations look different, with new restrictions on visitors. Shopping went primarily online, from clothing and gr gifts to groceries. Many of us cannot wait to see 2020 come to a close with great hopes for an improved 2021. Our typical New Year resolutions seem pretty weak and silly in light of the year that we have lived through. I urge you not to waste the opportunity to make some powerful, impactful resolutions for 2021. What if we took a different perspective and began this year by asking the following questions. What is God's plan and purpose for my life this year? Will I be able to trust God with the new challenges that I will be facing? What do I need to do to draw closer to Him? You see, life is to be lived with an eternal perspective. Are you tired of making the same old resolutions every January 1st and then watching them fall by the wayside by the time March rolls in? Let's not waste this opportunity to make resolutions this year with a spiritual impact. See, the practice of making New Year's resolutions goes back over 3,000 years to the ancient Babylonians. There's just something about the start of a new year that gives us the feeling that of a fresh start and a new beginning. Now, in reality, there's no difference between December 31st and January 1st. Nothing mystical happens at midnight on December 31st. The Bible does not speak for or against the concept of a New Year's resolution. However, if a Christian determines to make a New Year's resolution, what kind of resolution should he or she make? Well, you know, common New Year resolutions are commitments to quit smoking, to stop drinking, uh, to manage money more wisely, and maybe spend more time with family. By far, the most common New Year resolution is to lose weight in conjunction with exercising more and eating more healthily. I mean, these are all good goals to set. However, 1 Timothy 4.8 instructs us to keep exercise in perspective. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. The vast majority of New Year resolutions, even among Christians, 
are in relation to physical things. Let's make 2021 a year for spiritual resolutions instead of physical resolutions. Now, many Christians make New Year resolutions to pray more, to read the Bible every day and attend church more regularly. I mean, these are all great goals. However, these New Year resolutions fail just as often as the non-spiritual resolutions because there's no power in a New Year's resolution. Resolving to start or stop doing a certain activity has no value unless you have the proper motivation for stopping or starting that activity. For example, why do you want to read the Bible every day? Is it to honor God and to grow spiritually? Or is it because you've just heard it's a thing that Christians really need to do? Why do you want to lose weight? Is it to honor God with your body? Or is it for vanity, to honor yourself? Philippians 4.13 tells us, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And John 15.5 declares, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. See, if God is the center of your New Year's resolution, it has a chance for success, depending on your commitment to it. If it's God's will for something to be fulfilled, he will enable you to fulfill it. Now conversely, if a resolution is not God-honoring or not in agreement with God's word, we're not going to receive God's help in fulfilling that resolution. So what sort of New Year's resolution should a Christian make? Well, here are some suggestions. First of all, pray to the Lord for wisdom regarding what re resolutions, if any, that he would have you make. James chapter 1 verse 5 says that if anyone lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who generously gives wisdom to all without finding fault. Ask God first. Next, pray for wisdom as to how to fulfill the goals that God gives you. Sometimes he gives you an outlandish, impossible sounding goal that can only be fulfilled with his help. Big, hairy, audacious goals can only be fulfilled with God's assistance. Third, rely on God's strength to help you. You're not out there in the wind all by yourself. As the Apostle Paul said, in my weakness, he is strong. Next, find an accountability partner who will help you and encourage you. We all need someone to pray for us and with us. Be sure it's someone that you can trust. Now, I'm blessed with a great Christian friend who has been in my life since we were children. She has consistently spoken into my life over the years, and we have cried and encouraged each other through many challenges along the way. We challenge one another's spiritual walk and help each other stay on track. Fifth, don't become discouraged with occasional failures. Instead, allow them to motivate you further. Sometimes what we perceive as a setback is really a reset. Remember, you can't catch the right bus if you're insisting on sitting on the wrong bus. Pray that God closes the wrong doors for your life and don't kick them back down when he does. Six, don't become proud or vain, but give God the glory. Remember that everything that we have and everything that happens to us is filtered through God's hands. There's no real achievement that we can point to ourselves as orchestrating. Stay humble. Thank Him for His provision. Psalm 37 verses 5 and 6 says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust Him, and He will do this. He'll make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. So, how do we go about establishing these spiritual themes for the new year? Well, first of all, you begin with prayer. 
Ask God how he wants you to grow in your relationship with him for 2021. Resist the temptation to tell him how you want to grow and dictate how you want him to orchestrate that. Instead, ask him. Sit in his presence. Wait for his answer. Be open to doing what he tells you. I mean, you may be thinking that you'd like to grow in a relationship with God by starting a new ministry at your church. He may have other plans that include humility and servanthood. A former pastor of mine once shared how he felt the call to a pulpit ministry when he graduated from seminary. He thought he should be able to immediately step into a lead pastor position. But God had other ideas. Instead of opening doors to, the, the, to lead pastor jobs, he placed this eager young man in a residential care home where he was responsible for bathing, feeding, and dressing seven disabled men. Oh, this was clearly not going to plan. Instead of preaching powerful, fiery sermons, this young man changed adult diapers. He washed these men's bodies and hair and spoon-fed them their meals. He learned humility. He learned servanthood. He learned how to see God in the least of people that generally are ignored. Eventually, he became a lead pastor, and his time with these seven disabled men prepared him to minister to people in his flock as he was finally able to deliver those great life-changing sermons. Be willing to hold your plans with open hands. This is an opportunity to trust Jesus. He may take you down roads that you would never choose for yourself, but know that his plans for you are always better than anything you can dream up for yourself. In Genesis chapter 37, we meet Joseph, the favorite son of his father Jacob. And Joseph's brothers are jealous and they cooked up a scheme to get Joseph out of their lives. They sold him into slavery, told their father he had been killed and eaten by a wild animal. Now Joseph becomes a trusted slave to Potiphar who put him in charge of everything that he owned with the exception of his wife. Well, the wife has other ideas and tries to seduce Joseph and is furious when he turns down her advances. She lies that he attacked her and Joseph is sent to jail. Now there he gains favor with the jailer and his fellow prisoners, and God uses him to interpret dreams. When Pharaoh has a disturbing dream that none of his advisors can interpret, Joseph is brought from prison to meet with Pharaoh, who promotes Joseph to second in command of Egypt. And through Joseph's leadership, his family is saved from famine. He's reconciled with his brothers and the entire clan relocates to the best property in Egypt. Now, I'm sure Joseph would not have chosen this road for himself, but God had big plans for him. And through his long and difficult journey, Joseph continued to trust God, even though he couldn't see where this journey would take him. Hold your plans with open hands. Trust God in his plans for you. Now we've seen that finding a spiritual goal for the year begins with prayer. The next step is finding a verse or a word for the year. Now one of the best ways that you'll find your verse or verses for the new year is through consistent daily Bible reading. The verses just seem to leap off the page. And there's, there always seems to be a major prompting that says, This, this is it. Or, that prompting comes to you through times of prayer, asking God for a word that will define the year with him. You know, last, last year in January, I wrote the word resurrection in my journal. I strongly felt that God had impressed on me that 2020 was going to be a year of resurrection for my life and ministry. Let me tell you, it did not turn out at all the way that I had envisioned. I imagined that this meant that I would be allowed to fill the pulpit at my home church more than once a quarter. Instead, the preaching calendar filled up without me getting any opportunity. 
and in the midst of my deep disappointment and wondering if I had correctly heard from God about that whole resurrection thing, God opened up something I had never, ever considered, preaching a message each week on the internet. Did you know that something has to die before the Lord can resurrect it? God has been incredibly faithful with me, giving me messages to deliver. I think the download of sermon material is one of the most incredible, fulfilling experiences that a person can have with God. I love these times that I share with the Lord. Deuteronomy 28.8 reads, The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and, and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land that he is giving you. The Lord wants to bless you. Blessings come when we are obedient. We miss blessings when we're disobedient or we aren't looking for them. We need to keep our eyes open to seeing the blessings that God sends us. You see, even in the past challenging year of 2020, we can look back and count our blessings. I mean, maybe we learned a new skill like baking homemade bread, or we ministered to other shut-ins by phone. Perhaps we discovered that we're better employees when we lose the distractions of being physically present in the office, or discovered that we can be far more productive without the commute to and from work. You may have discovered you enjoy helping your child learn online, or the surprise that you actually enjoy having your kids at home all day, every day. Finding a spiritual goal for the coming year begins with prayer. It includes seeking God's guidance for a word or a verse for the year, and it includes keeping a journal. Face it. It is hard to remember what we did yesterday, let alone a month ago. Journaling is important when it comes to setting spiritual, a spiritual theme for the year. First, it provides a written record, spiritually, physically, and emotionally, of your life. I love to flip back through prior year's journals and review the trials and the tears and the way that God resolved each issue and reflect on His faithfulness. Second, it tells where I was and how far I've come in my relationship with God. Hopefully, by the end of the year, you'll have learned to trust Him more and your love relationship with Him has deepened. And third, a journal leaves a written legacy to your family. Now, I didn't always keep a journal. Sometime back around 1996, a friend had gifted me one with a beautiful, uh, she would gifted me with this beautiful blank journal. I thanked her, I put it back in its pretty box, and I set it on my shelf, where it sat undisturbed for a couple of years. In 1998, we lived in an urban area of Virginia, and I felt a strong draw to move to the country. I was praying this request one morning, and the Lord flashed a mental picture of this journal sitting on the shelf in my bedroom into my mind and said, record this prayer and it will become a testament to me when I fulfill it. Well, no problem. Every disappointing day of house hunting was dutifully recorded in that journal. And then, out of the blue, my husband was transferred to Michigan. He declared that he did not want to drive more than 30 miles to work. So we found a compass and we drew a 30 mile circle around his office. This covered five different counties, so we worked with five different real estate agents. Basically, we told them our desires. A four-bedroom house with some land and in a particular price range. Whoever finds us the house first wins. We bought a four-bedroom ranch-style home on 10 acres of land in our price range. And after we moved in, we discovered that it was exactly 30 miles, wheel stop to wheel stop, from my husband's assigned parking place at work to his garage space in the new home. I've kept the journal ever since, recording God's faithfulness. We've seen that making spiritual resolutions for the new year includes prayer, finding a verse or a word for the year, and keeping a journal. It's up to you to join him and say, Lord, 
I hereby resolve to allow you to teach me this year. What is our spiritual theme? Now in closing, I have a project for you and your family for 2021. I saw this project, similar project, on Pinterest, and it suggested writing every good thing that happens over the year on a post-it note and putting them in a jar to be opened and read on New Year's Eve. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I suggest a spiritual twist to this project. Instead of recording the fun things that happen throughout the year, I suggest you write answered prayers on these notes and put them in the jar. It doesn't have to be big fancy prayers that are answered. For example, we visited the zoo with my son's family over the Thanksgiving holiday. And way off in the distance, we heard a lion roar. I had never heard a lion roar before, and it gave me chills. And on the way to the lion exhibit, my daughter-in-law said, Lord, please let the lion roar again where we can see it. My God is faithful. As we rounded the corner to the lion exhibit, and we could see this giant cat stretched out in the sunshine, he opened his mouth and let loose with a great roar. God answered her prayer. See, this project will keep you open to noticing God answers, answering our prayers, both great and small. You might even assign each family member a different color of post-it notes and make being open to God a family project. And oh, what fun you will have on New Year's Eve 2021 when you open that jar and review God's wonderful faithfulness throughout the past year. I wish you a new year filled with God's favor and overflowing love. God bless you most abundantly until we meet again.